Hey everyone, my name is Braden. In this video, we're going to go over how to become a data analyst in 2021. There are three typical paths that you can take to become a data analyst. So you can go to school and get formal education. You can take a boot camp, or you can go down the self-taught route. Each of these paths have pros and cons. And so I've come up with six criteria to help us decide which path is best for you. We will look at cost, curriculum, or in other words, what you will be learning, how much time it will take, the networking opportunities, support, and credibility. For formal education, the cost and time it will take are the biggest drawbacks. However, the opportunities to meet and network with other students and professionals in your field will likely be better than the other paths. You will also have a built-in support system when you run into problems and have questions. Far more than any other option, schools have the highest credibility. What I mean by that is when you put your education on your resume, a hiring manager or future employer will look most favorably on an accredited post-secondary institution compared to a boot camp or being self-taught. For curriculum, it's kind of a toss up with formal education. If you go into a four year degree program, you'll have to spend a lot of time learning things you'll never use. Learning, however, is valuable, whether you use the skills that you learn or not. Formal education also has a bad rap for teaching things that are out of date and not up with the latest trends. However, with formal education, the things that you learn, there will be a richness and a depth to it that you are likely not going to get with other alternatives. For boot camps, you will need to make sure the boot camp you're going with is a good one. There will be a lot of variability in the quality of boot camps. This is probably the biggest drawback, and for this reason, and because they're relatively new, they are not going to be viewed as credible as formal education. You are likely to save money with boot camps compared to formal education. However, they can still be a fairly large financial commitment. The amount of time it takes to finish a boot camp will take less in terms of months or years compared to formal education. However, you will likely need to dedicate a lot of hours in the day while you complete the boot camp, which can be challenging, especially if you have another job or family responsibilities or both. Depending on the boot camp and how it is set up, there may or may not be good networking opportunities. So I've left this as a straight face. The big benefit of boot camps are having a laid out curriculum that is likely up to date. Boot camps tend to be a little more agile with the material that they teach. As with formal education, boot camps will have a built in support system for you when you run into problems and have questions, which is a major plus. The self taught path can be very challenging. However, this might be the most viable option for many of you. The best thing about going the self-taught route is the cost and flexibility. By far, this is going to be the cheapest option. You could do it for free. However, I would recommend setting aside a little bit of money if possible to get a few books and online courses. I'll leave some of my recommendations in the description link below. As for time, it's a bit of a toss up. You do have the flexibility to spend as much or as little time in a day as you want. However, because there isn't going to be a laid out curriculum, it's easy to get distracted or spend time trying to figure out what to learn rather than actually learning what you need to learn. As for networking, support, and credibility, there is none. At least none that is built in, like education or boot camps. For these reasons, self-taught path can be the most difficult. I've created a Discord server in hopes to create a community for data analysts and data scientists and those aspiring to work with data. So if you are planning on going the self-taught route, I would recommend joining that. For those of you who are planning on going the self-taught route, I'm going to go over the things you should learn and do to best help your chances of getting a job as a data analyst in 2021. So there is one little caveat that I should mention with all of this information. With schooling, education, and even learning on your own, there's a lot of variability in the information in the programs that are available to you. So make sure you do your own research if you are going the self-taught route, I'm going to go over the information that you need to know and some of the things that you should do in order to get a job as a data analyst. So first off, the things that you should learn, I would recommend starting with SQL or SQL, Structured Query Language. This is a staple of a data analyst. 
Not every job is going to require it, but most jobs will. So some of the things that you should learn are definitely select statements, from, where, group by, order by, joins, and understand at least a little bit about subqueries. You're going to need to know a data analysis tool. Most oftentimes that's going to be Python or R. So make sure you know things like for loops, if statements, functions. For libraries in Python, you should know pandas, numpy, matplotlib, a data visualization library, and Seaborn. If you decide to go the R route, you should know tidyverse and ggplot. Another tool that's often required for a data analyst to know is Tableau or Power BI. These are data visualization tools. So you should know how to build basic data visualizations with one of these tools. You don't have to know both of them. And then for bonus points, Excel is still widely used by a lot of companies. So you may wanna brush up on some intermediate Excel. And also there may be some other statistical tools depending on the field that you go into, something like SAS or Stata that you might need to know. These are a little more difficult to get into just because they do have a price barrier. SAS does have a free student version available. Those are the basic tools that you'll need to know if you want to become a data analyst. There are also some things that you should learn such as probability and statistics. At a very minimum, you should know descriptive statistics such as measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion. You're going to also want to know how to do hypothesis testing a basic understanding of research methodology. Part of a data analyst's job is to let others know what the data is saying, and a great way to do that is through data visualizations, being able to tell the story that the data says. So know how to present data. Also, you should start to learn how to write up a data analyst report, what types of information goes into those reports how best to describe to people who don't have experience with data. It's also going to help you out a, a lot if you have domain knowledge. So a basic understanding of the area that you're going to be working in. If it's health, you should have an understanding of how to do analysis and answer basic health related questions. If it's education or criminal justice, you should have an understanding of that area, some of the common problems, how those problems are addressed, and what data sources they use. There are some things you can start doing right now to help you get prepared for a data analyst job. First, start looking at job postings. Look at what skills are required. Look at what types of jobs are available. There are many different types of data analyst positions. What interests you the most? And start to develop skills that reflect those job postings. As you're learning, start thinking about projects that you can do to show off the things that you've learned. This will help you build a portfolio, which you can do in GitHub and even display on GitHub pages. Something else you can do is to write out a data analyst resume. So you might not have very many things to put on your resume right now. If you're just starting out, that's okay. When you learn a new skill, write that down on your resume, post it somewhere where you can see to keep you motivated. This can be a long and hard journey. However, it's very rewarding. And so it's good to have something there to show you where you started and where you are now and everything that you've learned. Something that's helped me is to get involved in the community. So go to meetups. There's an app called Meetup that has different types of meetups in the area that you're in. This will keep the information on the forefront of your mind and it really helps me to stay motivated and focused on my goal. Another thing you can do is look at my channel. If there are videos that I've posted on a certain topic and you're not familiar with, spend some time learning that topic. This is a good way to fill in knowledge gaps that you might have. Another thing you can do is get on LinkedIn and start following data analysts, data scientists. There are also Facebook groups that you can join. And finally, I would recommend getting onto a website like Kaggle where they have a lot of data available for you to practice and to hone those skills that you've been working on. If you have any other questions, please leave those in the comment section below or consider joining my Discord server. And best of luck on your data analyst journey.